Hi there, this is James Swanick, and you're listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast, where you learn how to take back control over alcohol and live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. Hi, this is Roseanne from the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Program. I'm an enrollment and journey coach, and I just celebrated 10 months living the alcohol free life just a few days back. When I started uh, my journey living alcohol-free, I was a divorced retiree living in Yuma, Arizona, who was desperately trying to work on her lost, her lost confidence and the persistent feeling that I was not lovable. I volunteered a lot locally, but I didn't really believe in my heart that I had anything valuable to offer anyone else. And secretly, I could barely stand looking in the mirror. So much has changed throughout my journey over the last 10 months. Now I have one of the best jobs in the world because I get to witness lives being transformed daily during the period of 90 days and beyond. I, uh, I live life with a skip in my step and I absolutely love to laugh. It is without a doubt one of the reasons I was inspired enough to start working with this program. I am stepping in for James Swanick today on some of his podcasts moving forward. So no pressure, right? I'm just trying to step into the shoes of a trained ESPN news broadcaster with a charming Aussie accent and a TV personality. This is crazy. James's favorite thing to do with his clients, and of course I was one of them, is to stretch them into uncomfortable roles as to create true and lasting change. I'm living proof um, of that massive change in the Alcohol Freedom Lifestyle Program, as is my guest, Steve Aguiar, who's 51 years old from Elk Grove, California, and works for the city of Livermore as an environmental compliance supervisor. Steve is only a few days behind me in his alcohol-free journey, uh, and we are going to talk to Steve about how he lost a whopping 60 pounds in this journey, has developed a positive outlook on his life and better relationships with his wife and um, those he works with. Thank you so much, Steve, for joining me on my first podcast. I so appreciate it. Hi, Roseanne. Happy to be here. And by the way, when are you going to be 10 months alcohol free? Uh, In two days. Yay. So. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, let's start with telling people about um, what your life looked like before you started this journey, um, being alcohol free. Okay. Well, it's a good time to be doing this podcast as we start a new year, because last January, uh, where I was at, I was, um, as Roseanne said, I uh, work as an environmental compliance supervisor. So basically, I, I work in local government. I do environmental wastewater water regulations. Uh After 23 years, I'll be honest with you, not super exciting. Um, I was getting up every day. I have a very long commute, get up at 4 a.m., drive 40 miles, take a train, do, it was a little bike ride uh, then, it's a longer bike ride now. Um, But I'd get up every day, just, you know, I hate my commute, I hate my job, Uh, just a bad attitude. I mean, it was now that I look back where I'm at now, um, I was setting up each day, to have a bad day for failure. Um, Still the same job. Uh, I come in here with just a way different outlook. Uh, You said I'm 51, gonna be 52 this summer. Uh, Public service, got good pension. Uh, Gonna be out of here in three and a half years. So um, I just kind of changed the way I look at my job. In my past, I've had a lot of, uh, responsible for four inspectors. Um, I've trained a lot of inspectors through the years and that's one thing Early on, as I moved up in my career and moved up into management, I really enjoyed that. Some along the way, I just I lost that. And I've got two new staff, two millennials that are just awesome. They break the mold. They're, you know, whatever you think of millennials, uh, my two, they're they're not like that, especially working through this COVID stuff. So I've kind of just refocused in that. You know, this program I've run it for, like I said, 23 years. These these wastewater programs I did started in the mid 80s. So I've kind of been the steward of, steward of this. Um, longer than, than anyone else since the history of this program in this city. So I'm looking more of just moving on, passing the torch, uh, building them up, getting them in a position to take over uh, sure. for me when sure. I go on. So it's just kind of changed the outlook instead of looking at the job, just kind of 
kind of reframing it and what I could focus on. And that's, that's something I, I, I enjoy doing. And uh, the clarity from, from being alcohol free is, has, has helped me to uh, look at the same job and look at different opportunities in it. Very cool. Tell me about your drinking though habits prior to starting. So yeah, <laughs> that's one thing about once, you know, I like the 90 days uh, and further. Uh, Cause when you start out, you're like, yeah, I kind of drank like this. Once you separate from that and you really get clarity and you really start looking at back at how you could get a real honest picture of how you were drinking. Right. Uh, so I was going down, you know, when I, when I called James for the, to join the 30 day program, I look back now as a real fork in the road. I was, you know, you know, weekend drinker, binge drinker. Um, and then the last like couple of years, it started going into, hey, I'm going to get a pint before the train. Uh, maybe a little half pint of vodka before, you know, and then drinking, it was starting to become an everyday thing. And it was becoming, uh, you know, starting to scare myself, scare my wife. Um, my wife never really, you know, she wasn't one that she didn't hassle me. Like, you got to quit drinking. She was like, you just got to check yourself. Yeah, I can, you know, throttle it back. Um, this or that. And, you know, but, and before I joined, what hadn't happened, I mean, so when I look back at drinking, I remember my last binge and my wife was so upset, not, you know, and it wasn't anger. It was like, you're just never, never happy. What's, what's wrong. You're not happy. You're not the guy, you know, I'm, I'm married. And, uh, that made me really stop in my tracks. I wasn't happy with my drink and myself. And then I was seeing it impact her. And then, uh, you know, that day, like I remember my last day of, my first day of sobriety or whatever. Yeah. I would call it sobriety. because not drinking, not being that, you know, I look at it alcohol free now, but that first day, you know, I laid in my, on my couch, just depressed as hell. And, uh, and that's kind of one of the, you know, <laughs> I think when you think about drinking now, that's my, that's my memory of that day. And that talk with her, it's not, it's, 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 it's good. It forced me to action, but it's not a good one. I don't, I don't associate a lot of positive thoughts when I look back at drinking now. And that's, that's one of the big one to the forefront. And that's when I, you know, I'd been looking at stuff before that I'd been looking up stuff. And um, that's how the project 90 alcohol 30 thing started popping up in, in ads. And I started watching James video and that's when I decided I gotta, I gotta, you know, make a change. Um, in terms of your health, where were you health-wise at the beginning of your journey? So I was uh, a whopping 251 pounds. Um, and Roseanne could post a picture later. Later, So that was at the same time uh, I take a train ride home. And the, that picture she posted, look at it. Because that guy you're looking at, that chubby guy, that's me after having, I remember that day, pint of beer. I'm kind of sluggish. It's got a red shirt on a big barrel chested boiler. You can see it's not, it's not flattering. Um, but my friend on the train, had took that and, and text me that picture. And I, I looked up over him, you know, cause he's sitting at the other trend and I'm like, all right, all right, I'm going to change this, you know? Um, but that picture was before the, the incident I told you before I called during probably another three or four weeks went by. Um, but I've changed it now. Um, Great. So 251 pounds uh, on medication for a mild high blood pressure. Um, I was taking medication for gout, which, you know, what do you think the trigger for that was? Alcohol. Um, since then, no blood pressure, pressure medication and uh, no gout medication at all. Wow. I, take, I take nothing. I rarely take uh, uh, Tylenol or anything like that. Last time I took Tylenol when I was up in the my cycling and my back was just was an injury. It was just, you know, fatigue. So it's a, it's a real good spot now. Wow. You know, you, you said you started in the 30 day, no alcohol um, challenge program. I, and surprisingly, I did too. Our paths are so similar. Um, but tell me about what happened after the 30 that you thought you wanted more. What were the what were okay, the conversations? So, what was going on in that program that made you feel good about it, but thought, yeah, I could use a little bit more? 
So the 30 day was great. The videos were great. I did the 47 day habit hacker at the same time. Um, but I had a problem getting out of bed. So in the 47, uh, 47 day habit hackers, you know, the, the tool three, two, one, get out of bed and go. Um, so I have a different routine now from that. But anyways, after the 30 days, um, you know, I was really engaged in that and I engaged with people on the, on the Facebook page and I was doing good. I wasn't drinking, but I didn't feel after the 30 days, I didn't feel confident that I had made a shift. And let me tell you, so, you know, I lost 60 pounds. Um, I cycle a lot. Um, that's not a comeback. I've, I've been here. I've been here before. I've done that before. And was it 1998? So I was more out of college. College friends making fun of me, you know, started a family, getting a little chubby, um, started running. And I ran and ended up training, did the San Francisco Marathon. So any of you runners out there, you know, you can't run long distance and drink. So obviously I wasn't drinking at that time. I went from probably, it was probably like 205, 210. So I was really like, I was skinny in high school. I was a small guy. I was, I was barely six foot, 140 pounds when I was a senior in high school. So let me tell you, when you're a skinny guy and then you get in your late 20s and you start putting on weight, especially with guys, no one has any problem about telling you how fat you are. No tap. <laughs> You know, and I, you know, I could take it and rub it, you know, it's ah, whatever, <laughs> but you know, deep down it, it, it hurt me and I'd play it off. Like it didn't hurt me. And that does, you know, affect your confidence. So, um, so 1998 went from 215, 210 ish to, I don't, uh, I weighed 172 when I did the San Francisco marathon. So, uh, you know, uh-huh. running 26 miles. And then I did that. Then I went back up in 2002, I ran a marathon on in Ireland. This time I got up to like 230 and I got down. So it's actually stronger. I got down to, I ran that at about 190. Um, and I'm about 188, 189 pounds now. Wow. So I've done that. I've done that. And I gave up alcohol at those times. I, I'd done that before. I'd been, I'd been at that spot and I had started losing weight in the 30 days. Um, I couldn't sign up fast enough for the 90 days because I really wanted a shift in the way of my relationship with alcohol, the way I saw it. Those other times I did it, I was like, okay, I'm going to run this marathon. I made it a finish line and I made, and I kind of associated the drinking with that. So it was like, okay, I reached the finish line. I can go back. And I didn't want this to be another finish line. There's no finish line. I wanted to change my relationship, the way I see alcohol and not see it as something I give up. Um, I know that's the theme of the program. I truly believe that now it is it's a choice. I'm choosing to be alcohol free. Uh, I love that I made that choice. Uh, I make it every day. I could drink. I can tell you right now, I can go back. Hey, I, I could probably convince my wife I'm going to have, you know, one or two drinks for that. And I'll probably do it for a while, but I, you know, it's opening for me and I know myself and I know, I know my past. And I know the way I'm with alcohol. It's for me. I don't even want to, I know it's cracking that door open and one and two becomes back to, to, to what you were, what you don't want to be. So Right. That was what I was really, I was looking for that shift in between, you know, here in my head. Right. And Yeah. Uh, and that's, um, that's actually something I wanted to talk to you about too, because a lot of people don't understand that Project 90 is actually a coaching program about how to live your best life. Right. And you're just putting alcohol over here and going, okay, let's see what I can accomplish without that. Right. Yeah. Very very few conversations we have in there are about alcohol. <laughs> it's more yeah. about how to handle life and life's uh, blips and problems and things throwing being thrown at you. Because a lot of times, like you know, what we do is a problem comes and we feel helpless and we go, okay, right? So yeah. tell me something that happened inside project 90 for you that was really a turning point in your relationship with looking at alcohol differently what do you think helped you in there it's hard to pinpoint it to one there were you know there's so many good good moments into it before we go into that i just want to say yeah that it the the most i've talked about drinking was just in that last question you asked me back (laughs) from all the project 90 things that's really the most I've ever really, you know, talked about the specifics. So um, it's, it's much more than that. So I think 
you know, for me, it's just, you know, coming in the weekly calls and, and hearing everybody and seeing where just different people, different parts of the world, uh, where they're at, um, and kind of the similarities of just, you know, hey, I know I want to be, I want to be a better, you know, father, mother, um, just, you know, better person. It just, just those goals and seeing other people go through that. And then you see similarities with, with other people. Um, I, you know, it's hard. I, the shift, it, it's hard to pinpoint, but it was just like, it, and it happened pretty quick, you know, cause at the 30 day, I was still like, still kind of feel like I'm giving up something. And then, uh, and, and then it's that shift was just like, yeah, now I'm gaining. Just when you see other people, like when you start, you see other people ahead and you see how much they've gained and you go, man, there's, there's more to gain. It's not, you're not giving up. It's your gaining. It's free. I feel so much more free right now. I let, mean, me, let me see if I can provide a cue for you since I went through with you. And I'm not sure I was in the beginning meetings where you, you started a pumpkin patch at work. And I oh, have yeah. no idea why you did that, but that ended up being a big focus for all of us. Tell us about why you did the pumpkin patch, what you gained from it, why it was important. Okay, so that was the, the beginning of the COVID and uh, my, my boss, our division manager is high risk and she needs to be at home. Uh, so she, she needed one of her management team to step up. So, you know, I said, I do it. And, uh, which was great because I had, you know, started the alcohol free journey. Um, so the, the clear head, the clarity, even though I was in the beginning, uh, was good that I was getting. So anyways, I, all of a sudden I go, I managed like five or six people. I go, I've got the whole division at 60. It's times of uncertainty. People are, you know, worried, you know, we have to be here. We're water, wastewater, we provide service and essential. So we had to come in. So anyways, I had wanted to grow big pumpkins in my backyard and my wife said, so we don't have room to do that. So I started, it's that, that's how it started. And then I was growing the seeds here in the office window and people are like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm going to grow some big ass pumpkins in this little plot of land here. And then it kind of grew and they're like, Hey, well, can I help? I had people that I'm telling you, some of these people are the most ornery people. Just, you know, I think of it, they operate a wastewater plant. That's a sewage treatment plant. You know, they're great guys, but they're like, well, yeah, hey, can I help? Um, and so it kind of took a life of its own and it grew, it grew for me to do it. I ended up planting like three rows. We had over a hundred, hundred pumpkins and it ended up being a good, I go, uh, team building thing. And that was kind of just, it's good that you brought that up because that was the kind of shift where you started seeing the shift in, or where I started seeing the shift in my attitude mm -hmm. and me drinking. I still probably would have stepped up with my boss. I had to have a shitty attitude about it. Why do these people get to be home? We got to come in here. We're the canary in the coal mine. We're the guinea pig. We get the COVID. And I was just, I just really started focusing on people when they come in and tell me that what the, I go, Hey, it is what it is. We got to, we have to be here, you know? Um, and they were like, you know, they, some people had a nickname for me. They would call me Mr. Happy. Cause when I come in the office on that bike and I kind of explained how it was and it was like, you know, Mr. Happy was a sarcastic way. And it's just like, you know, I look back now and I'm like, man, I don't want the, I don't want the world to see me that way. You know, oh, here comes Mr. Happy, you know, and this is sarcastic. Thing. Um, so just started doing that. And I just tried to be, it was not try because I was just being more positive um, and just keep everybody's, everybody's spirits up. And, you know, I needed them to come in and, uh, and, you know, we had, we had our challenges, you know, people were like, go oh, management down at city hall is not telling me I said that. And I just told people, I said, Hey, you want to know something? Come in my office. I will tell you everything I need to know. I go, these are unprecedented times and it might be something I shouldn't share with staff, but I'm in charge and I get to run this the way I want. And it's a pandemic and this or that. So I'm going to throw some roles out and, and lead and do, do what I think is right. I had a couple of people come in. Um, probably violated a couple of HIPAA laws, but, um, <laughs> we're, we're here a year later. They're fine. Nothing happened. It's just, um, so, uh, uh, uh and that was really the beginning of the, the shift. And I was just like going, this is great. And then you get the, you get, you know, positive, um, feedback from people, you know, and then with the COVID 
not seeing a lot of people, um, not going in a lot of other departments in City Hall. There was a gap that people didn't see me. They saw 251, then they saw maybe 220 <laughs> or, or uh 200 pounds, Steve. And they're like, whoa, what's going on? And then uh, I'm like, hey, I went, I decided to be alcohol free. I've been cycling like crazy and, and, and this or that. So uh... just a quick message from our show sponsor, Project 90, the program that helps you enjoy life more by getting ultimate power over alcohol. Project 90 helps high achievers regain their confidence, be more present with friends and family, get clear, reduce stress and anxiety, sleep better, increase focus and productivity, and feel a whole lot better. Project 90 does this by helping members quit alcohol for at least 90 days whilst providing six months of accountability and support. The program has an 87% success rate of members reaching at least 90 consecutive days alcohol-free on their first attempt. Members get a one-on-one -on -one accountability coach, a community of like-minded people to interact with, 100% privacy and confidentiality, and what's more, members tell us that it's fun. Project 90 members are mostly over the age of 35, entrepreneurs, executives, top professionals, retirees. So if you're in your late 30s or 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s or older, and you consider yourself a high achiever and you're ready to upgrade your life by quitting alcohol for at least 90 days, maybe more, then you can have a free 45-minute exploratory call with one of Project 90's former clients, now coaches. If you'd like to book that call, you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule. Or if you're on your phone in the US right now, you can text me at the number 44222. Just send me the word Project 90. Send that to 44222, and the word is Project 90, and we'll email you a schedule link. Okay, let's get back to today's episode. It's something we talk about a lot is I get to. So tell us about the things you got to start doing that maybe you wouldn't have done otherwise. Okay, so uh, let's start at the beginning of the morning. I get to take a commuter train. I get to take a commuter train that hits cars, breaks down, it's late. Um, I get to, you know, this is a big one for me because the commute, the life of a super commuter out here in the San Francisco Bay, it, it's, it's, it's tough. Um, but I really, I really have changed the way I look at the train. I laugh at myself because I started doing the journaling. So I get, I get it, park my car, take my bike, get on the train. I sit down, I get to journal. I do the journal and that's, you know, doing the, doing the gratitudes, it, it's a really great way to start the day. And that's when my day starts when I get on the train. Um, and so I, that's the first thing I do every day. I sit down on my thing and write the gratitude, write what I want to do for the day, um, do the daily affirmations. Um, and then I get to talk to people. I have the great friends on the train that just have different jobs, different stuff. It's not like I didn't talk to them before. It's just more engaging and present now. Um, I know more about their work. I know more what's going on with them. Some of them in their, their personal life. Um, you know, it's like someone walks in the train, Hey, how did, how, how did it go with your daughter this weekend or whatever? Where before the conversations really weren't, weren't as meaningful or whatever. I know personally more about some of these folks. Um, and I don't have to be in my car. Um, so we need to talk about the get to with the bike in the back of you because that was a okay. No, no, I'll, get to, I'll get to that. <laughs> so then, so I can get off at a train station that's three miles from my office, and that's what I was doing. And coming in after those nights of three or four beers, it it, it was a journey, it's just a sluggish thing. So then I started as I got alcohol free. I started getting up at the station before coming in. I get to ride seven miles. This morning and the past couple of weeks, because uh, I'm doing a new on uh, online cycling challenge, I kind of just bypass work. I go out. There's in Livermore. There's uh, we're, we're wine country out here. So if you think of the San Francisco Bay area, you think of East Bay, you think of Oakland. A um, little east of that, that's where I'm at in Livermore. We've got some rolling hills. It used to be uh, cattle land when I was a kid. Um, it's kind of grown and, and expanded more into the barrier, but we still have wine country. We have rolling hills. Um, I ride out there. So I rode 20 miles before I came to the office this morning and I, and I get to do that. I feel great. 
um, I start out in the dark and as I'm coming, go up into the hills, as I'm coming out, sun's rising, beautiful. I totally come into work with a different attitude. It's, and you're still um, inspiring others too inside the program by posting beautiful views and just, you know, people love to see what's ahead of them. So thank you for doing yeah, that. You're and it's been fun to watch your, uh, your growth. Tell me about relationships. You talked a little bit about um, relationship with your wife. I know you talked um, about her reaction um, that day that you kind of decided something had to change, but what kind of shifts happened for you? Um, so her, her name's Julie, right? You and Julie. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Julie. So I've been married to her since second marriage since, uh, 2014. Um, so it's funny as I look back, because when we started dating, you know, you're always on your, you're always on your best behavior. You're always at your sweetest when you're courting. Mm -hmm. this or that. And so I consciously made a thing with my, my drinking, you know, throttle it, you know, do less, you know, and then as we become comfortable, or at least I do, and, you know, I started slipping back in those old habits because she was like, I didn't realize you drank so much when we had that conversation. I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> um, but I would say that this, the shifts were, my wife has, a, her job is tough. I've become more, uh, a better listener and more, sympathetic you know as guys we want to just solve the problem you know hey get a new job you know those people there this you know instead of, instead of just listening sometimes you, sometimes you just gotta listen it's not a problem i'm gonna solve especially now um she's working from home she you know she does this the zoom stuff and like i said i talk to people all day on the train um so usually when i'm home i want that i i was finding myself i want to be I've been talking to people all day. I've had, you know, I'm talked out. Uh, so I realized well, she hasn't seen anybody today except the two dogs and you walking in and she's excited to see you. So instead of being like, oh, why are you talking to me so much? You know, I just got my foot at the door. I want to get out of my biking gear. I want to change just to just to pause and, and listen and listen how her day was and, and ask how it was. And it's such a different it's like the same conversations, but it's a di different, it's different because I have a different attitude walking in, seeing that she hasn't seen you all day. <laughs> she hasn't talked to another human being, whether I would, before I was looking at, man, I've worked all day. I've done this commute. I just want to get in, change my clothes, and start relaxing. So just being more conscientious about other people, my spouse's feelings and where, where she's at. So, yeah, I think we, we use this, co this concept a lot of being clear and present. And um, I think you're describing that the, yeah. the result of being clear and present and um, I guess less reactionary. Would you say that you became far less reactionary too when you became alcohol free? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> That kind of helps marriages, right? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, a little bit. Yeah, just because, you know, there were times in the past with that, I'd be like, you know, I could, I, I wear my heart and sleeve and emotions on my shoulders. So when I'm irritated, it's in, you know, and I've stood there with my backpack and my stuff and just been like, the whole body language, like, you know, and I'm like, what my body is saying, could you shut the hell up? so i can use the bathroom and go on so it's just changing so and because i was coming from a place of irritation right because i was just focused on me right. uh, so being more present going hey she's been sitting here waiting a year long commute she's been waiting to tell you something or this or that and you should be happy that your wife is excited to see you and wants to talk to you instead of you know, irritated. It's the same conversations. It's a, it's a different outcome. I'm not saying every day is like that. Cause there's some days I come in, I'm like, I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta do, you know, um, right. but overall it's more, it's, it's, it's more that way. And I don't start the evening out irritated, which is not a good way to start the, the, the few hours I waking hours I have at home with uh, my wife. 
How um, you have some kids too. Have you noticed um, how it's affected any relationship with your children? Uh, I would like to say <laughs> yes. I'd like to see my kids more. I've got I've got four kids. Uh, they are 27, 25, 23, and 21. So my son is off on the other, on the East Coast in the Marines. Uh, we have two daughters, one at, uh, one's at UC Santa Cruz and one's at Long Beach. Um, so it's more of the text. And then my, my other daughter lives at home with her mom and she's off with her boyfriend all the time. So they're the typical 20 year olds. In fact, before I got on here, I just text my ex-wife. I said, have you heard from our youngest? Because I text her. <laughs> last week and then i called her and said just let dad know it's okay and my she texts back my ex-wife texts back but i saw oh that's good that you said that because i thought she was mad at me uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll check with her roommate if i don't hear from her so the kid i mean they you know we spent christmas uh together my, my three girls my son couldn't make it home so uh and it was funny because the whole alcohol thing uh julie does a great dinner and she always puts like a menu together so she had a drink menu and so she was telling me oh you can you could you can mix the drinks i'm like i hate mixing drinks when i'm drinking but it was like okay my daughters and a, it's like <laughs> one of them one of them works in a restaurant and did a little bartending i you know like but before i would have been okay i'm not drinking this is a chip in the attitude because it's um okay i'm not drinking and you want me to be isaac from the love boat making drinks right you know <laughs> but i just said okay i'll do it I don't, you know, so whatever. So my girls came over, they wanted to drink. We made the first drink. And that's when we, my, one of my daughters said, you really don't, you're not really, you don't drink at all, dad. And I'm like, no, never, don't plan on doing it ever again. I said, look at me, you know, cause they hadn't seen me. They're like, oh my God, dad, you're so skinny. Are those skinny jeans? I'm like, they're jeans that fit. I wouldn't call them skinny jeans. Um, <laughs> but um, that's awesome. No, it was good. And, and I don't know. You know, you worry about your kids and their own drinking when they're in their, their college years and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, my dad, my dad stopped drinking later on in life and he was never one to lecture me, but you know, my old man had the way of giving me that look like, you know, you better watch it, you know? Um, so, you know, hopefully, you know, my kids don't, don't, don't flirt with the dangers that I did, but whole, you know, that's one of the things is where you, you know, you see yourself moving forward. It's like, you know, I hope I could be, you know, an example to them of how much life is, uh, can be better without it. You know, I mean, if you're the person that has one or two drinks and you're fine and, and you, you do leave it at that and it's every now and then, um, but you know, any amounts not, not good for you. So, um, if you're inclined to have more, it's definitely not good for you. I'm sure you're a very good inspiration for your children right now. So I wish I would see them more and had, had more to Me add on too. that, but they're the typical 20 year olds living their lives and they're, they're, they're doing great. I'm very proud of that. Yeah. I have four as well and they're spread out all over the country and I feel the same way. Um, but I can only hope that, you know, what I do moving forward is an inspiration. So, um, I want to share, I want to share something about, um, something that happened for both of us when we were in project 90 in one of those meetings for anybody who's been on a zoom meeting, they know. But there's something about um, sharing in those intimate um, group calls uh, about experiences that makes us feel like, wow, we're not alone. Because having that loop in our brain about drinking, and it's a very lonely loop, right? <laughs> um, and ha having the freedom to kind of just talk about different things that go on. But there was one time where I was pretty uh, emotional and in kind of a happy way, because I think it was near the end of my journey. And I had said, you know, I used to feel like a fraud. I used to just feel like, you know, I know you know me and you think you like me, but if you really knew me. And, oh my gosh, I'm getting emotional when I think about it, but you had written me a private message. Thank you for sharing that, Roseanne. I felt the exact same way. I mean, can you share about how you felt when you... Yeah, I heard you say that. I saw you, you know, break down and cry a bit, and I'm sitting there going, oh, this lady, she just said how I feel. You know, I'm like, we could, you know, even, you know, you're drinking, you, you, you're not coming to work, you know, as James says, what are you, you know... 
uh, what are you, you know, seven out of 10, six out of 10. Um, yeah, I think I told him seven out of 10 and I was rounding that. Um, but you can come to work and you can suck it up and you could put on, you know, you can get your job done. Most of us are all really good at our jobs and we get it done. It might not to be the best of our effort, but it's good enough. Uh, and, you know, I was never a good enough guy. Um, you know, I always want to put my best effort in. So when you said that, I'm just sitting there going, man, if people knew, people know how I got smashed on the weekend and just wasting my time. Um, it just sort of just really sit with me. I wasn't happy with myself, you know? So it was like, yeah, if you really, if you really knew me and then we're our own worst critics, we focus mm -hmm. on the negative that, you know, I'm going to focus on that worst thing. If I drank last weekend and got hammered, it bothered me for weeks. Especially, you know, it'd just be like, oh, I shouldn't have you know, drank too much Saturday. It's Thursday. I'm still down about it, thinking about it. I could have done some great things at work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, boss happy. But I'm like, man, if you really knew me, you know, right. I was tore up all weekend. I, you know, I wasn't there for my wife. I didn't get these things done. I'm like, you know, I drove to the store. What I got a deuce if I got pulled over, all those things. I'm like, yeah, if you really, if you saw that guy, he's not so great. He might be a good employee. You might think he's okay, but uh, not so great. And so, um, so when you said that, I was just like, oh man, you're crying and you feel bad for that. And I'm like, I totally think this way. I got to send you a message. Yeah. Um, well, thank not you. Alone. So. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that because it made me feel not alone too. And, and that is one of the reasons that groups. And I don't feel that way now. I feel yeah. like you really knew me now. You, you know, hopefully. I not. know. I, <laughs> <way>. I, <like. laughs> I know. This is what this is what ten months in looks like. Yeah. yeah. If you really knew me, this is me. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I oh gosh, love getting rid of that feeling. Hey, before we kind of sign off, is there anything that you could um share with those people that are listening and uh, they're considering the program and I don't know. And, you know, is there anything you want to share additionally that you haven't about what, what has happened for you or how it's helped you that would help them? Well, I would say if you're considering it, you're Googling it, you're searching these ads are starting to pop up. You're doing that for a reason. You're, you're you know, you're doing it for a reason. It's a sign. Um, so. If you're thinking, you probably should. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then, so, so now, and it's just, uh, do it. Life is short. And it's, it's, I mean, I'm only 10 months in. I've made the physical change. Like I said, I've done that before. This change between here, is, I think that's always going to be a work in process. And that's, that's one of the big things I've learned from it, that there's no, it's not a finish line. It's like, no, I complete my 90 days. I'm alcohol free. I'm never going to think about this stuff again or this or that. Um, that is always continuing trying to, uh, to better yourself and, and, and make that choice to be alcohol free. The things I got out of it, it's just, I mean, the big thing is I, I'm saying, I'm going to say it again, it's freedom. I feel so much freer now and more, optimistic about the future i might i was literally approaching you say i just got to get through today i have my beer on the train go home and do it all over again right. I, I, I do not i can't believe i thought that way and i can't believe how long i i, I, I let myself think that way so I thought my new word for it is psychological slavery uh, yeah um, cause there's a loop in your subconscious brain that you're always trying to battle and, um, just, and if I look at the money that I've saved, I mean, with taking the train, stopping at the convenience store, I probably have to say for the week, 90 to a hundred bucks, let's say a hundred bucks. It's been 10 months, just roughly That's uh -huh. $4,000. Yeah. 4, um, I'm going to go into my app. I have an app where I track my days. So where is it? I know the last time I checked, I had saved like 800. I can't find it now, but it, I'm 309 days. I've saved well over $6,000 and just drinking costs alone. And that's in COVID. That's not going out to drink and buying a great martini, right? Yeah. Um, I had saved 800 hours of drinking time. But when I add up 
the mornings that I wasn't operational is probably double that, right? In ten months. So yeah, and then and just being smarter with your money. There's I can give you an example after I had a car repair and I said, okay, you know, is it really this? I've done a lot of business with you. And I saved like 800 bucks just from a phone call, a friendly phone call, not going, what the hell? I looked at this. I was just like, Hey, you know, I've done a lot of business with you. Uh, you know, I see the parts. This, it is, you know, and the guy's all, let me call you back. He's all, Hey, I talked to my service manager. We could do this as a recall and it's only going to cost you 200 bucks. It was going to be like 900 bucks or something. And I was like, wow. Hey, <laughs> um, it, it pays to be happy. right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, and then wow. just, you know, the whole, I would say some of the biggest things I've always looked at, you know, obviously I've had fluctuations in my weight and I've always done a diet and I've looked at it as a goal. I want to be this weight. I want to, do, I'm really not, I mean, I've lost weight um, or I do the cycling. I want, or when I did the thing, I had a goal. I want to run a marathon. I want to 26.2 miles. I want to get that done. I've shifted. I'm just like, I'm just riding. I'm riding a lot. I do a virtual challenge online with a bunch of folks. I'm actually, I used to run like, oh, I got to run 15 miles today, part of this training thing. And I'd be running angry uh, when I was running. Wow. And, now, and now it's just like, I go out, hey, I'm doing this and I'm still trying to push myself. I still have a distance I want to go. Um, I'm not looking at it. I'm, this is like a lifestyle. It's like, I want to be active. Um, I look to the future. Like I, said, I got three daughters and a son and I want and how I want to be remembered, how I want to be seen. I don't want to be grandpa that had one too many at the family dinner. I want my grandkids to go, my grandpa, that crazy bastard's badass. Got a big heart, <laughs> but he'll go. He can get up and go. I want, you know, I don't, I, that's, you know, and that's what we get to, we get to write me. The future is wide open. And uh, I mean, I can, you know, I can make bad choices and go back and I can be that guy. You know, now I've got video proof. So no, we're not going to do that. Um, but you know, just look to the future and what, what I want to be. I look how I want to be remembered here. And that's another thing. I, when I went to city hall right before Christmas, someone saw me and they're like, Oh my God, Steve, you look so different. And this was someone obviously I'd worked with for years. It was her little retirement luncheon. Um, and then I saw someone new and this was, this was like kind of a aha moment for me. So, Hey, you're that crazy guy that rides all over the place. And I go, <laughs> I go, yeah, I am. And she wanted to talk to me about bikes. Her her, her uh, brother-in-law or something worked for one of the bike specialized bikes. And I said, oh, that's my bike that I have. And uh, I walked away from that and I was thinking, I like that. You're the crazy guy that rides all over the place. Because I go riding at lunch and before work. And I, cause when I came here 20 years ago, I was a crazy young kid that ran everywhere. I'd run on my lunch times. And I'm like, well, maybe I can, you know, if I go out, I've got four or five more years. I, I want people to think that of me because there's plenty here. There's more of my getting older that, you know, been at the conferences with me. We go, Hey, we had, a, you know, we go and have a good time. Oh, you guys are going in for the night. No, I don't got to speak or something tomorrow. We're going out and having fun. Uh, so I, I would like the new people that are coming here and there's a big, you know, that we got an aging workforce. Uh, and I'm on the, the lower end of that. I'm 52. Um, but a lot of people are going out. A lot of new people are coming in just a great time to be, alcohol free with new people coming into the workplace hopefully grandkids coming at some point in my life and um and me figuring out what i want to do in my retirement years looks like you've started uh to figure out a little something here and yeah. look at you, shining success <laughs> from uh from pupil to teacher so yay roseanne proud yeah, of you. Glad no, to I through this with you and uh be part of your first podcast here. Uh, hopefully, I haven't bored people to 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 death here, and uh, you could show them that that picture if you want to edit that in or something. It's 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 glorious. I definitely will, Steve. I um I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing my first podcast uh, with thanks me. Thanks for asking me. I couldn't have planned for a better you know uh, chat and podcast. It, it's just been great going through this process with you and seeing your progress and cheering each other on. So thank you for being here. No, oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. Okay. We'll see you soon. Okay. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. 
You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>